In this video I'm going to be taking a look at Panasonic's 100-300mm version 2 lens which was released last year as a revised version of the original 100-300 with the same optics but with the addition of weather sealing, fast autofocus and compatibility with dual IS2 on newer camera models. The lens comes bundled with a padded carrying pouch and as usual with Panasonic lenses it also includes a bayonet fitting lens hood, something which Olympus could definitely learn from. With a micro four thirds two times crop factor, this lens provides a 35mm equivalent focal length of 200 to 600mm. Build quality is excellent for a lens of this price, the construction is mostly metal with some plastic parts and a metal lens mount. Compared to other manufacturers lenses with a similar focal length, this lens is relatively compact. But when comparing it to other micro four thirds lenses, it's something of a monster. It weighs in at 520 grams, and when looking at it side by side with the 45 to 150 and the 12 to 60, the size difference is immediately apparent. On the side of the lens, you'll find a button to turn optical image stabilization on or off, which is useful as it means you don't have to navigate through the menus. Given the size and weight of this lens, it's not the most comfortable to use with smaller micro four thirds bodies like this GF7. It's difficult to hold steady as it feels very front heavy and there's nothing to hold on to. With larger bodies like the G85 though, it's a lot more comfortable to hold and feels more balanced. Starting with still images, let's take a look at some sample shots. These were all taken on a tripod using the timer and carefully focused on the text. This is a 100% crop from the centre of the image. At 300mm wide open, the image is fairly soft, even in the centre. Chromatic aberrations, however, are non-existent and there's little to no distortion. Sharpness is improved by stepping down to f6.3 and the image is at its sharpest by f8. At 200mm there's a substantial improvement at all apertures, but the image is still a little soft wide open, with the sharpest image at around f6.3. As expected, the lens is at its sharpest at the lowest focal length of 100mm. Sharpness is good right from f4, though it's at its sharpest again by f6.3. To give you an idea of the sharpness at different focal lengths, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the lens at 300, 200 and 100 millimeters, all shot at f6.3. As you can see, there's a significant improvement between 300 millimeters and 200 millimeters, and an even greater improvement between 200 and 100 millimeters. Moving on to video now, this lens is compatible with dual IS2 on newer camera bodies like the G9, G85 and GH5. But even with it turned on, shooting stable video handheld at 300mm is practically impossible. Taking the crop factor into account, this is an equivalent focal length of almost 700mm in 35mm terms, which is just too much to ask of the in-body stabilisation. With the addition of a monopod, however, you can capture some very nice stable video in 4K, even at the maximum zoom range. In 4K, autofocus is also a bit hit and miss, but that's more of an issue with Panasonic's video AF system in general than this particular lens. Overall then, this lens is an excellent option for wildlife photographers or videographers who are looking for a relatively inexpensive lens for long range work. It's not in the same class as the Leica 100-400, but it's also less than half the price. Just bear in mind that it's best suited for situations where you have plenty of available light, given the long focal length and the relatively slow aperture. I'll end this video with a selection of videos and sample photos that I've taken with this lens on the GX80 and the G80. Thanks for watching.